Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be checking out more of Bruva Alpha Boost's Intro to the World of Darkness. This is going to be Speaker D going to town on what's kind of sounding like an amazing system. The World of Darkness system. I know, it's like I just said in the title. Last time around, we did a lot of the intro work, the game philosophies, basically just how to get into it. Next up, part two, go to see what we got here. If it's anything like the last one, I'm kind of curious, and I kind of want to get into this. Now, we haven't gotten to the mechanics yet. Don't know if I'll like that, because every time people talked about it, it was just a... Uh, Right over the head. Mostly because I don't have enough context to understand the mechanics they were referencing. That said, that's something I can get into over time. I just want to find out. So again, you know the links down below. Hit them up. Are you done? If you like this, subscribe. Let's get started. Part 2. Game Philosophy. Hey! I actually got that right. I thought I remembered it, but Before I, wasn't I sure. keep selling you the legend of John Henry's hammer, though, I should tell you how Wad earns the accolades I've been heaping on it. But Most TTRPGs are built on the famous three pillars. That's combat, exploration, and social gameplay. Some games flex... I'll be honest, I've played a lot of the exploration, I've played a lot of the combat, and yeah, it does do a lot of social. What other aspects would they really have to focus on other than looking around, interacting, and fighting? Especially hard on certain pillars. Pathfinder First Edition wouldn't be Pathfinder First Edition. Yeah, all if combat, right? Busting the mechanics open like some multi armed gunslinger tycoon of the action economy. That actually Meanwhile, sounds funny. A game like Call of Cthulhu is all about the mystery and horror of Lovecraftian fiction. So Players the aren't aspect? called adventurers, they're called investigators. Oh. And that's because the game focuses more on the pillar of exploration than rushing down Yogsapoth with a blicky in a pocket. Yeah, that would not work. Likewise, I'm sorry, what animation did they just use? Oh my god. Then rushing down Yogsapoth with a blicky in a pocket full of green. <gasps> okay, they had fun with this, like the little fire, the gun, it's just like. <laughs> sorry, it's a silly animation, but it actually is funny. Likewise, as you probably guessed, World of Darkness is the role player's role play game with emphasis on your character first oh? and everything else second. Oh. Therefore, it leans most heavily on the social pillar. What does that mean? Essentially, if you're tuning in for Vampire Diablo, then there are better games for you. What? The systems here are built around drama, suspense, and politicking. Combat's fun, but it's also incredibly lethal. Wait, as mentioned in the rules, the storyteller system is designated with a huge amount of tactical combat in mind. Just enough is the intention. For a game like Hunter, which violence is frequent, less common... The frequent least common denominator, some troops may prefer to play through combats with the intention of tricking every last available health box or ticking every last available health box for the antagonist trackers. Oh. At the same time, many troops will pref oh, prefer the narrative focus of the game with a three turns and out. Oh, wait, three turns and out? Oh, because they get in for three turns of combat and they're done. Oh, actually, that seems like a really fast, efficient system. I mean, especially compared to fourth edition. It would be way faster because I've heard horror stories of those turns. Hmm. And letting a single role determine conflict's outcome and then providing narrative detail to give it context. A single role for combat. Ah. Wait, I said I was thinking of game philosophy of the pre-ones. I think it's more just the general vibe was the first one we looked. Eh, whatever. I make mistakes. Huh. I don't... I can see how I like the things up in the top and the things in the bottom. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely more of the top and doing the combat thing, but the single role determining combat? <sighs> One that actually puts a lot of work on the storyteller, so whoever's DMing this is... that That's a lot of pressure, man. Honestly, the reason I kind of like going to mechanic-based bullshittery is just because it gives you hard systems to work around that the DM can't really fuck up too much. And by that, I mean in their favor to murder you. They can, but usually you're kind of aware of it once things are down. Unless they're really good at acting, in which case they can do anything. But most people take some time to realize that. Some people. Not all of them. Some people. You know who you are. And come to an agreement with the troop. But for, yeah, you can always just change it. Completely reassess your decision at any time. It makes sense. I like how they give you the two options that are the easiest. But just, I, I would have a hard time wrapping my head around that. Like that they have it, especially for really simple outcomes where you don't expect a really cool narrative fight. It's going to be engaged, just like, hey, random sewer rat tried to bite you. How do you want to deal with it? Like the thing you don't really care about. Also, it could be a sewer rat invested with space Ebola or vampire Ebola. Actually, that would make sense in the setting. And risky. 
Any schmuck with a shotgun can get lucky and remodel your face into a vertical conversation pit. Unless, Damn. of course, you're a werewolf. An eight-foot-tall killing machine of Gaia's vengeance and fury. Except for also, no, it's still possible. What? It's just more difficult. Wait, you can actually kill a werewolf with shotguns? I mean, enough shotguns? Frankly, I've heard what they do, man. They are like... Well, they're beasts, literally. In every sense of the word. It, it's kind of terrifying, man. You're not you invincible. Fuck with them. No one is. In WAD, the game isn't usually about plundering. How have I only noticed that the freaking abbreviation for the game is World of Darkness? WAD. I just... Sorry, WOD. It, it's... I feel like I should apologize for someone for that. It's such a horrible abbreviation. Oh... Still not as bad as the University of Texas, uh, Texas Instrumentalism. Just, uh, just put that on the sweater. I love UTIs! Uh, it, it never gets old. In a dungeon. It's about maintaining whatever stressful life you're presently leading, struggling oh. and changing as you're bounced between unseen agendas, all while fighting to make your own possible life. <laughs> Odd is ultimately a game about the players, their decisions, their goals, more so than other RPGs. You set your agendas. You decide what's important to you. Your storyteller is there to guide you, to challenge you, and ultimately wearing a build a satisfying arc. Different game Wait, was that a bunch of vampire nerds playing D&D? No, sorry, it's not vampires. It's accountants and calculators. Everybody knows that game. It's the best one out there. Oh my god. Different game lines have different ways to approach the more social, character-driven aspects of the game. Mage is very These approaches cool. are universally interesting, and something I'd love to go more in-depth with for oh. individual game lines in later videos. Here's a few in a nutshell, though. In Vampire, you play as a monster, forced to drink the blood of the living to survive, struggling and compromising with your darkest self to retain your humanity. It's an experience best summarized in the signature phrase, A beast I am. At least a beast I become. In Mage, you are an enlightened will worker with a unique gift, the near limitless power of magic. And with that magic, you can quite literally change the world. Oh. The question is, how will you? Do you have the right? And have you thought through what happened to the world if you did? Or hell, what happened if you didn't? Ooh. Honestly, I've heard of the first two settings, of course. Mage, because I've seen a lot of people really geek out about just how crazy it gets at the higher levels. And even the lower levels, it's more manageable. And Vampire, of course, because that's what Hunter started with, so I have the most knowledge of that. And Werewolf just says, don't. Uh, not, not don't play, just don't fuck with them. I know the least about everything else, though. Changeling, I know kind of a little bit, just because people mentioned it's a thing. Wraith, because... Apparently there was a game based on it. I only knew that because it was shown earlier in this video. Hmm. It... With all the emphasis on roleplay, I wonder how the book for modules would work, or if they even set up the same way at all. Are they just guidelines? Wraith in particular has oh, a very of strong concept. You're dead and gone. A verifiable ghost with a whole world of ghost politics oh, and ghost ah, intrigue surrounding you. That is disturbing. All of it is artifice. At its heart, Wraith is about moving on. Your goal isn't to become king of Ghost Mountain, it's to confront your death, accept it, and leave your character behind as bravely as you can. This act oh. of confronting mortality, of essentially starting play with a character who ideally won't survive, it's very interesting. I think it's pretty powerful and bold. And the only reason more people don't play it is... Because another player at your table contractually has to whack you with a horse whip all game. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say that's definitely a joke and not something... Uh, why is there a guy with a horse whip behind him? There's even a little white face in the... <laughs> they just put that everywhere, didn't they? It's like the guy who's like the shadow with a little face in the mirror and like the... Is that the troll face reversed? Sideways? I can't tell if it is or not. Oh, jeez. Still, though, I just... So Wraith, the goal there, and this is the, oddly enough the part no one really talks about, or at least that I understood, entirely possible they did, and I just, I mean, I, I didn't get it. Your entire process is literally to undo yourself. Well, 
It's called Wraith the Oblivion. You're literally striving for oblivion. Okay, it's literally in the title. You ever have a moment where you're just like, ah, oh, wow, I'm not even blonde. Yeah. yeah, I'm having that one right now. Oh, God. It's very weird, kind of adversarial, but uh, but it can be good. Uh, only play it with your rabbi, your priest, your polycule, whoever you trust. But um, polycule? Um, hey, you want to hear more about combat? Let's go. Depending on the kind of creature Whoa. you're playing as, you have different... Honestly, the biggest thing I'm thinking here is that's three distinct art styles for a very similar game. Of course, the Nosferatu look. We got the cyberpunk look and the hyper... Not really realistic, but almost anime-esque, high-end cartoon style of comic book that I've seen a few times, and honestly, the covers look like this, and they're amazing, and then they get inside, it's like, oh, okay, it's still not bad. I, just, I love the shadows, the darkness, the colorations. Here, like, uh, the eyes that look different under the glass, the freaking coverings. Is that a mechanical raven in her hand? Dude, and then, of just, course, the... It's Nosferatu's disgusting, seedy... Missing fingers? Uh, maybe it's just the hand shape. Yeah, it's, it's three very similar styles in these two, but very different subject matters to make him look different. And, and then you just go from grainy to high depth. And just, I just like that this is the same setting, probably. I'm assuming that's werewolf. That's probably vampire. And uh, hunter? I would go hunter on this one. Seriously, just <laughs> so many art styles that fit into the same general universe. Nice. Sorry, just I appreciate that. Different systems working to keep Whoa. you more alive than the average Joe when some psychopath oh, is built standing your skull in half. But no matter what you are, you that need happened. to plan your engagements, at least a little bit. Fight dirty, try to strike first, strike fast. Strike when the guys you're trying to decapitate aren't staring directly at you, because even if you'll probably win a fair fight, you could also suddenly and unexpectedly not. This more oh. realistic approach to combat not only encourages you to fight sparingly and find other means of resolving conflicts, but it also gives you, the player, a leg up on even the biggest of bads. This is because the metric for oh fuck for essentially everyone in the setting is three Nylon coat? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Three to six people with shotguns hanging out somewhere they don't expect them. What do you say that about shotguns? This is because the metric for oh fuck for essentially everyone in the setting is three to six people with shotguns hanging out somewhere they don't expect them. Wait. Only three to six people with shotguns is actually a threat to almost everything? I mean, not Kane, of course, but he doesn't count. And probably some of the upper level baddies who you almost never get unless you're in some kind of weird campaign, I'm assuming. But just for most things at most levels, just a bunch of shotguns do it. I wonder if someone's running a party where it's just like, Woo, yeah, we're rednecks with shotguns. We're just going to run in here and do shit. Like super high and dumbery. Not just dumbassery, just dumbery. They don't even have the ass words. It's already been blown off. That statement on the dangers of combat shouldn't be confused to mean every beastie is a pushover, though. Oh? Vampires take bullets like love taps. A werewolf pack decisively wins the M1 Abrams matchup, and mages can essentially deal with anything so long as they've got prep time. Oh. Whether you're running a hunter's cell, a vampire coterie, or a wraith... Circle? Circle? They're called circles? Really? Anyway, no matter what your boy band is called, the thing that can give you the edge over supernaturals more powerful than you is this. Guns? The base rule for everyone else in World of Darkness is something to the effect of, fuck you, got mine. Most greater societies... Wait, said what? Is something to the effect of, fuck you, got mine. Oh, fuck Most you greater got societies, Why? organizations, or deeply troubled people tend to go it alone. When they confederate, it's usually on deeply unequal footing, with strangled ambitions and treachery around every corner. Predatory people act like predators, for all the good and all the ill that nets them. So that's a strength for your special group, who ideally do not... So you're actually working together where the enemy isn't. Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. And, uh, oh, vampire feeding thrall, of course. All the ill that nets them. So that's a strength for your special group, who ideally do not all hate each other and or are not actively plotting each other's death. Eight together I strong, so if tactical plastic placement fails you, know that just having a circle of dependable friends and allies is a hidden... You and the squad about to hit the town. Oh my god. Just had to throw that one in there. An X factor in a world like this. For those paying attention, yes, you're goddamn right. The power of friendship is meta in the world of darkness, just like it is in real life. 
This shouldn't be taken to think that all supernatural creatures are weenies, though. Uh, vampires juggle dumpsters. The Fae can shoot death beams by playing the ukulele. The hell? It's just that even with that kind of firepower, damage in combat is kept somewhat realistic. Mark Henry is a very strong lad, but if I ran him over with an 18-wheeler, his strength would not avail him. Probably. Uh, maybe the best- Wait, what did that say? Stamina plus performance. Ten successes? Oh, so it's rolling for success. Oh, interesting. Uh, maybe the best way to view it is mostly realistic. It's not as if there are painstaking ah. systems meant to reflect getting your wounds infected or whatever. In fact, as dangerous as combat is, you can sometimes pull away with even the faintest of odds. Oh. Case in point, I have one memorable story of a game where one of my players very bravely leapt out and started doing kung fu shit out of <laughs> heavily armed PMC board kickers. He beat the snot out of one, but was seemingly oblivious to the fact he had put himself point-blank range PMC with his rear life. to a man with an automatic shotgun. This should have been the end of his character, but... but despite their kung fu moves, they had no protections outside of their leather jacket. Yet, somehow, that bastard managed to walk away. Not just with their life, but with nary a scratch. How? Is that because it's a dice game and I rolled the worst damage in the world? Yes. But it That's also awful. illustrates a point. Because on the other end of the spectrum, you have moments where getting shot point blank with a shotgun does not result in a small boo-boo, and instead bypasses powers granting invincibility and immortality. Uh, this is best seen in 5th edition's Conclave of Prague. We Bruja. Oh, so it's actually written from their standpoint. Interesting. A huh. lore event where a surprise shotgun blast turned the perfectly chiseled face of Camarilla faction leader Hardest at the Younger into a goopy splattering of extra spicy element soup. Despite the fact that the guy had a near complete mastery of Ventru super durability. Personally, I've had it both ways. The combat isn't realistic in the sense that things are modeled realistically. Oh. And you have to make sure your wounds don't get infected. They had to bring back the dung collector. They didn't even change his model, it's just him. Except I think his hat is even more dungified than before. Shit. It's realistic in the sense that combat is confusing, tumultuous, and dangerous. No, 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 go! Why is that one the dangerous one? Confusing? Okay. Tumultuous. Okay. Dangerous. It doesn't look scary at all. What is... I'm just not going to ask. Also, he has four hands in here. I, I, I need to ask. Realistic what the hell was up with that thing? That combat is confusing, tumultuous, and... This... It, I don't, the more I look at this, the more I'm just legitimately afraid. It looks like, okay, it's two shoes on a rubber, oh, they have a rubber boot. They cut away the sole and put teeth into it. And then, then there's the eyes and the white paint. I just, this is nightmare fuel. I, I should stop looking at this. I can't look away. Like one eye's all dark, the other eye's mostly white. I just, oh, uh, just, I don't want to see this. Why am I still looking? Dangerous. Outside of Werewolf, Wad is not typically that combat-focused of a game. Oh. So when it does happen, combat accentuates the social consequences of battle. Namely, the risk of death. And it's dead, yeah. So why then, if it's so dangerous, would anyone get involved in combat? Roleplay. Because, dummy, it's fun! Also, your characters probably have something to fight for. And if they don't... Dumbass, you probably have a boss you're beholden to that's gonna make you do shit you don't want to do because they don't want to do it. I thought this wasn't supposed to be realistic. That just got real, real fast. Whether it's your ideals, your own survival, or pure self-interest, most inhabitants of the world of darkness will eventually find the Lepowski? violence filtering into their lives. What has a strong emphasis on corrupt systems of power? The Almost hell? every game oh, line has a heaping helping of row, row, fight the power baked directly into <laughs> nice. it. Nice. Unless, of course. Okay. Nice. They they actually worked in. Speaker D actually worked in a Gurren Logon reference. I appreciate that. And honestly, that's the biggest reason I would do anything. Because if you can bake in row, row, fight the power, hell yeah. What you gonna do? So you choose to row, row, be the power, in oh, which case your prerogative that. is making sure anyone fights the law has about as much success as the Bobby Fuller 4. Fight the yoke of the ancients as an anarch vampire, or jockey for your place at the top within the Camarilla. 
toil to bring magic back to the world with the Council of Nine Traditions, or keep the masses moving towards your utopia and the technocratic union. Or fuck it! Sit it all out! Don't pick a side! Trouble inevitably will- Wait, what did that say? Please join my coterie. Stop running, please. Oh, is that a vampire? Oh, I don't even know what that is. That is disturbing. Trouble inevitably will always come to you, but the choice and its consequences are always yours. Pretty sure that's a Pokemon they drew there. One of the missing, no. No, not missing, no. Like, unknown? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the symbol. It looks very familiar. Also, it's kind of cool how they literally have it draw. Oh, that's a really cool image. They have it right here on the side. And then there's a bigger one over here. You can just kind of see that they have bits of it. Huh. So, cool art. if you're ready to play a tabletop role-playing game that focuses on exploring your own special snowflake as they struggle and suffer in a hostile world of freaks, if you're okay getting your head popped off because Soup Can Joe, the heavy-hauling hobo, rolled six tens on their firearms roll, Damn. and vampires, werewolf, wizards, and urban decay, World of Darkness might be for you. Hmm. The only question is, where do you start? What? The answer is the video game. What? Wait. Was not expecting the video game to be answered through a tabletop. But okay, let's roll with this one. Uh, is he just bashing his head against the wall? Okay, this is they used a few shots from the sword. Oh, hello there. Um, Vampire Club. I see why people like this game. World of Darkness is lucky enough to have several excellent video games under its belt. Oh. But the one everyone talks about is Legendary Crime Against Semicolons, Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines. Do not let punctuation fool you. Bloodlines is very, very good. Oh. A classic, some might say. Many Quite people old. I wonder if might say. It. Many people might say better than me might say. So I won't go into exhausting detail. If you never heard of this game, there are many excellent breakdowns on Bloodlines to pursue at your leisure, but take my word for it. If ever there was a Wad Primer, by God, it's this game. See, I've actually even heard of this one, although I didn't realize it was this old. People always talk about when I've heard them talk about, not even just in my discords or in comments, but even before that, when I had no idea what World of Darkness was, it's like, yeah, this is great. And I'm just like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I've just heard them talk about how great it was. So yeah. I know this is what it looked like. In it, you play a freshly embraced vampire of your chosen clan, oh. plunged headfirst into a web of undead politics, treachery, and other hot topics. Your decisions matter, the characters feel human, and nothing has encapsulated the feeling of World of Darkness better, in my opinion. Is it flawed? <laughs> Honestly, just the idea that your decisions matter. I I'm so used to the illusion of choice where the choice is like, yeah, <laughs> no. And the outcome is, hey, this is great. Did you buy the DLC that actually has an ending? I'm looking at you, Dragon Age 3 Inquisition. It just... Huh. Such an old game actually having a really good decision system? That's tempting in its own right. You met your ass it is. Don't ever ask me what a Quajin is! But to be brief, I highly recommend it to What's just about Quajin? anyone who has ever drawn Wrath on the planet. Just, uh... Yeah, play the unofficial patch, because everything bad you've heard about Hollywood sewers is true. But I know you want more. You want the TTRPG. What? In the what with the sewers? What? Also, there's unofficial patches? Wait, how could... How modded does this game get? The answer's probably very. It's been around longer. There's probably tons of mods. So I'm gonna tell you where to start there, too. But first... Add time. What? Imagine if you... Oh, were, no. You are on an airplane. It crashes into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so people have mentioned Blessed a lot of times, and they have him in there, and they said he's a real person, not just a joke they were doing, although it's also a joke. Who is he? Apparently he's in the ending credits. I just... I just gloss over because I see words like... Uh, so if someone knows, I'm actually very curious. And miraculously, you survive. A scream. Another survivor dragged into the brine. This is an Things ad? Emerge. The hungering, deadly maw of a great white shark swimming straight for you! In this situation, wouldn't you rather be at Noble Night Games? Noble Night Games! Really? This is. If they, I'm assuming these ads are approved in advance. It's like, hey, do you know what's gonna be funny? Murdering people with a mascot! 
And of course, it has to be this place. We say, I've already hawked for this one before. And, and this is, it's just... We are about to enter a very dangerous time. And I might have to cut this one short in case my wallet starts screaming preemptively. James oh, has given no. us a mysteriously sourced bag of money to promote this oh, anti-shark propaganda. And also, to remind you that Ooh. it is the premier location for tabletop games and RPGs in Madison, Wisconsin, where you now live! Are you and your coven suffering from symptoms of Wait, dystopia? what they look like with all the light on? Huh. I'm looking for a new, fresh RPG franchise to fill the void. Whoa. Oh, you are? What? None better to help plug that gaping wound in your Sunday evenings. The Noble Night Game. You want to play Vampire the Masquerade? Which one? How about Vampire Where the Masquerade? Where are they? Oh, that one. That's got to be. Oh, there it is. How do they do it? What's going on? And they have mummy in stock. Okay, I'm less scared. It's safe to come out again. Board gaming? They got it. Boards games? They got it. The Spear of Longinus? They keep it in the back. Woo? Oh. Really? Longinus? Is that just like a British pronunciation or is... You know, I'm not going to take it. I thought it was Longinus, but I could be wrong because it's me. Plastic Attic, Noble Knight Glue Cauldron. Do they actually have a cauldron of it? That would be actually kind of cool. All the glue you can eat! But what to do when that mafia book you need Not touching that one. Well, add it to your want list! You get an email as soon as someone with the book dies and their oh. possessions are contributed to the Noble Knight Game Archives. Thank you! Or if someone... Like... Wait, they actually have donations for... It's kind of dark, but also not a bad way to keep your stuff in stock. Um, sells it to them. To their yeah, that too. Program, which you can also do! All this with a free shipping within the U.S. for any order over $149, as well as a flat... You know, I was going to say something about how that seems like an extremely expensive cost. And then I remembered I play 40k... I'm not going to finish that thought because it gets very depressing very fast. And if you know what I mean, my apologies for reminding you. Yeah. At rate, U.S. shipping option with all orders shipped out within 24 hours, hours, which indeed covers your order of 15 blood dim tide supplements, you mermaid milk freak. Do you see this what? knight? He fights for your freedom. He does. I'm not going to ask you. about the mermaid one. Uh, Why? Because gamers like you populate his web store, buy his goods, and temper his wrath. In conclusion, who was D.B. Cooper? I don't know, but you. Wait, did they actually have stats for D.B. Cooper? Wrath. In conclusion. Uh, bullet for the... I can't see it dark. Artist conception? Oh, no, it was just his mugshot, yeah. Who I think it was the plane Stevie hijacker. Cooper? I don't know, but you might find the answer. At yeah, he jumped out of the plane and got away. No one ever found him. I've actually played Wingspan. So, yeah, uh, ignore any odd cuts in there. I, uh, I didn't pull up Noble Night Games on my phone or check out to see if they had anything in stock and maybe get tempted. I That, um... That didn't happen, and if my wife is watching... Sorry, dear. Yeah, that said, honestly, I just, this is, it's weird that I'm being told to get into a tabletop RPG through a video game. I'm used to the idea of D&D &D where it's like, there are video games that are in the setting, like from what I've heard, Tor um, I think it was Planescape Torment was amazing, but it's not quite D&D. &D. It's good. It's just different. And uh, Magister's Crown Celesta, or Celesta the Magister's Crown, is a really good example of D&D that honestly I think might be played better as a D&D simulator. And if you can manage just your own stuff, that, de details. Just, it, it's weird that that's the way to jump into the setting, though. I just, I, I kind of want to do it. I don't even know if it's on Steam. It probably is because it's an old PC game, and I think they're all on Steam. Probably good disc. I just, you go check that out, don't I? Huh. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I might check it out. I very well might stream it. I might not because uh, I have a feeling YouTube wouldn't appreciate some aspects. <clears throat> but more importantly, I kind of want to get people's opinion. Is the game as good as Speaker D hyped it up to be? Because if it is, I might just play it for the hell of it because that sounded kind of fun. A lot of engaging roleplay aspects that are going to give you choices that matter. I, I just, I want to do that. I, I can't, I'm talking myself into it, aren't I? I really am. So overall, first time around, we got what the game felt like. Now we have the game philosophy, which is basically heavy roleplay. As someone who likes the combat aspect of D&D, &D, as much as the roleplay, not D&D, &D, like just roleplaying games in general, I, I'm not sure if I'm a good fit, because I like the roleplay, but I love the combat just as much. I, huh, 
it seems like this is actually a very important question for your group to fit into. Or you're just playing a game where you're going to have tons of stock characters to run into tons of combat because everybody's going to die. That actually might be fun in its own right, actually. Just have a character rush. No idea if that would work in this system. Probably wouldn't. But it might be fun. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like being in a situation where I can find out more about it. it. It's fun. But then again, I'm the kind of person who likes getting into new systems. I don't understand a bit of what I'm looking at. But it's fun finding out. So if you know anything about the things I've asked, thank you in advance. Also, seriously, people lately have been really great about just answering my questions. Like the Disney villain who was impaled to death. I was just like, oh yeah, it was Ursula. I don't remember that. I do not remember the end of Little Mermaid. Just a uh, aside, because I asked that in a previous video, and I, I just, I still don't remember it. Yeah. But everyone in the comments was really helpful, and hopefully they'll answer my questions here too, because that would be really nice. Because there is a bunch I'm very curious about. Either way, though, I'll see you guys in the next one, because, um... I, I'm not thinking if I can work something into my budget about a game store. You saw nothing? I didn't. Definitely uh, didn't edit that part out because I might have left the recording. I, that didn't happen. There was nothing I had to cut out. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Either way, though, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. And if you like this, hit me up. Subscribe. And let me know if there's anything I missed because, yeah. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.